Hello, celebrity gossip enthusiasts. I'm Us Weekly's entertainment director, Travis Curtin, and you're listening to Us Weekly's Hot Hollywood Podcast. This show we break down all of the hottest and most Hollywoody stories of the week. Luckily, I am joined by my two amazing co-hosts. We have a lady who just like the Taco Bell Mexican pizza is sliced and diced, Gwen Flamberg. Sliced and diced. I'm not quite sure um, what the rest. I meant to say. Is. I meant to say spicy and dicey. Spicy and dicey. Well, you know, I am dicey. I'm so dicey a little bit when it comes to this podcast. You never know what I'm going to say. Hi, guys. (laughs) That is true. And she'll satisfy your 2 a.m. cravings just like it's Sarah Huron. Oh, my God. What? These are my Taco Bell references. Well, today we have a lot of celebrity news. We have two skinny blonde women fighting with each other on reality television that I cannot get enough of. We have a pregnant A-lister, a a TikTok musical in the works that we didn't know about. Some people ragging on Will Smith still. Some sexual assault allegations because it is still Hollywood. Uh, Joe Alwyn finally discussing Taylor Swift. Uh, some baby news, some Jonas, bonus Jonas baby news, um, and some legal woes, putting on our legal hats again. But let us start with our woes of the week, the stories that just made our host just shudder and just maybe a little bit excited. I don't know. We'll see. Sarah Huron, what made you go woe this week? Well, Travis, as you know, um, I'm a different person than I was 12 hours ago because I I went to go see Take Me Out, the Broadway play last night. Um, And it just so happened that, you know, I was offered tickets when this was a headline making play. It's not my fault. You know, the news comes to me. And in case you haven't heard, Jesse Williams of Grey's Anatomy fame um, goes goes full frontal in this play. Um, There is a lot of nudity in this play. It's about baseball and we're in the locker room. And, you know, dudes are taking showers while they're talking about the game and who's going to, you know, pitch this week. And also this week, there was a leak from within the theater. It was not me. Um, Someone snuck a second phone in. They do take your phone and put it in like the secure pouch. And then like you can't get it open until you have the machine thing that they open at the end. So they give you your phone back, but you can't really get it open. So I assume this person had a second phone. Um, and, you know, photos of Jesse did leak on the internet. Obviously, they weren't happy about it. The theater is now getting this, like, crazy new security system to yeah. be able to, like, track to see if people, like, are getting gum or getting their phone. Like, their statement was very extreme. There's definitely security people, like, in the hallways, um, up and down the aisle. And you know what? It was a great play. It's a great show. Um, I enjoyed it. Oh, I've never seen Baby Girl quite so blushy and giggly. You should have seen me last night. Thank God you were masked in the theater. She was in the sixth row. I was in the sixth row, Gwen. I was in the sixth row. He was there. The guy from Suits, Meghan Markle's on-screen husband, is also there full on naked. So I've seen, you know, what maybe Duchess Meghan hasn't even seen. I don't know how they did scenes on that show. Um, But wow, yeah, and I don't know. I mean, might be an obscure reference, but if you've seen Sister of the Traveling Pants 2, Alexis Bledel's character does go to a nude painting class, and the nude model is, in fact, Jesse Williams. They don't show anything because it's a PG-13 movie or maybe PG, but now I've gotten to see what Alexis Bledel has gotten to see what Meghan Markle has gotten to see. Um, Minka Kelly, I think, dated Jesse Williams. You know, she's dead. Yeah, stars are just like us, you know. <laughs> wow, well, you were right underneath it, so close to it. Thank you for your live reporting from any, inside the theater. Anytime, Travis. <laughs> I'm really happy for you and really just happy for all of us. Um, Gwen Flamberg, I hope you got to see a celebrity penis in real life again this week and it made you go whoa in all the right ways. Well, Travis, my woe is, um, it's kind of related to the nether regions, but a little bit, in a little bit of a different way. Um, Guys, I am not a mom, but I have friends, and I have a niece and a nephew, and I sure do know that diapers are expensive. So I was kind of floored yesterday when on the Goop uh, Instagram, they showed um, a diaper that was dropping ostensibly today called Le Diaper with an accent. And they were billed as uh, a pack of 12 
virgin alpaca wool lines nappies with uh, amber enclosures because the amber crystals give good energy to the baby. And they were uh, 12 diapers for $120. And, you know, the comments were epic. Everyone was, was like, has Gwyneth finally lost her mind? Well, of course it was satirical and for a good reason, because today Miss Gwynny herself is on the <laughs> Instagram and it says, if treating diapers like a luxury makes you mad, so should taxing them like a luxury. Despite Amazing. the absolute necessity of diapers, in 33 states, they aren't treated as an essential item. They're taxed as a luxury good. We priced our fictional diapers at $120 because that is what the diaper tax could cost families annually. Right now, many families in need are also struggling as a result of the nationwide formula shortage. Donate to Baby to Baby to help provide diapers, formula, and other essentials to family in need. Chained, hashtag change the diaper tax. All of this, of course, while the country is uh, assaulted by these uh, reproductive rights issues. So leave it to Gwyneth to be provocative. But in this uh, instance, it's really all for the good. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to go to baby to baby and I'm going to donate some money for some diapers for people in need. And hey, like I wouldn't mind a little nappy with an amber closure, just like wear on the daily for good energy whilst I'm working from home. Yeah, this was, first of all, fantastic. I loved it. And I do hope that she's selling some of them as like novelty things, because I would like yeah. to display one in my home. <laughs> she's not. It was just an illustration. There oh, is I, one that actually exists. And I was kind of like, I mean, lined in virgin alpaca wool. Like I'm allergic to wool. I don't think the babies <laughs> need to like be subject to that with their little sensitive baby skin. Anyway. I, maybe Sonia Morgan, who notoriously has been up front with the fact that she wears diapers uh, while traveling on the Ambassador Jitney to the Hamptons and flying. This might be a really great, you know, item for someone who chooses to wet themselves while traveling. Um, and how could you even have a baby without pieces of amber? I mean, horrible. It's ridiculous. It's amazing. Fantastic, Woe Gwen, because it really did make me go woe this week as well. Um, but another story that made me go woe is Mr. Wendy Williams. Now, Wendy has had a lot of health struggles. Uh, there's been addiction is issues. Allegedly, there have been rehab stints to Florida, and there have been a slew of guest hosts, so many that I can barely remember all of them. Jerry O'Connell, but now it's Sherry Shepard. And now Wendy Williams is saying she wants to have a sit down with Sherry Shepard, the new host, to talk about coming back. Now, the show does not seem to think that she is fit to come back, but she she wants to have a sit down with the new host and now they're taking it to the public eye and it's just getting messier and messier. I worry a little bit for Miss Wendy and I mean, how awkward for Sherry when Wendy's like, hey friend, could I have my show back? And Sherry's like, you're unwell. Please leave me alone. I would like to be a fly on the wall. Well, let us bust into some news. Now, <clears throat> The Taco Bell Mexican pizza. I know you're like, Travis, this is a celebrity news podcast. Why are you talking about your favorite Taco Bell item <clears throat> that you won't shut up about <clears throat> for years and years? Because I am a huge Mexican pizza fan. Now, it was discontinued two years ago in 2020. I marched to the streets. Uh, my It was not picked up by local media because, you know, they just didn't want you to see the real story. But luckily, Doja Cat took the baton from me and she went on TikTok and she created a song about the Taco Bell Mexican Picho, which was actually <clears throat> a total banger and like slaps sort of hard. And then in a very 2022 move, Dolly Parton will star in a TikTok musical for Taco Bell alongside Doja Cat. Uh, and of course, it will be about the chain's dearly missed Mexican pizza. Now, it is called Mexican Pizza the Musical, and it is said to be a real fast food ode to the Taco Bell menu item that will return to stores this month, bless, and will air live on TikTok on May 26th. Yes, that's May 26th. Set your calendars, everyone. Now, it all started when Doja Cat shared a uh, contractual rap for the chain, which was so great. There is a trumpeted beat. And then... Uh, 
it's Dolly Parton has now signed on. Now we don't know is she going to have a cameo, a leading role, a fairy moss mother of the Taco Bell. I think that would be a really good one, but apparently it is personal and confidential. Now over the last year, Taco Bell has tapped artists like Lil Nas X um, and Doja Cats to rap and sing about its cheesy gordita crunches and the things. Um, on its menu. Now, uh, Dolly's had a great month too. She landed this Mexican pizza roll and she's also being inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with Eminem, Lionel Richie, and the Eurythmics. And I just, <clears throat> it's just a feel good story. Everyone wins. Have you guys ever had a Mexican pizza? I can tell by oh. your lack of exciting that you have not had a delicious Mexican pizza. Because it's how long we've been talking about this. <laughs> but here's well, the thing I love yeah. Taco Bell. Love. Same. Yes. For Diva. <laughs> any day same and it's I love so- <laughs> I love raps for um a, um advertisements obviously I'm, I'm a boss like a boss by Lala Ken and Sheena Shea I tried to get that as my ringtone yeah great song and great I song. love Dolly Parton doing absolutely I, any goddamn thing I agree with that <clears throat> absolutely but, anything that's giving Dolly Parton money I am here for get that she's giving it back money. to all of us with all her charity work it's true. It's true. <clears throat> well, just again, set your calendars and thank you for bringing back the Mexican pizza just as a personal thing to me. I like to, you know, I take up charities and this is my charity of choice. Uh, baby to baby is great too. Well, Sarah Huron, speaking of charities, uh, Christina Hack Amstead El Musa uh, might be needed oh, some charities. Now, Hall. Because now sorry. <laughs> I forgot now her, Hall. her most important name, the new one. Oh, God. You know, it's going to take a couple more months for me to remember that one. I'm not going to. Well, by then it'll be too late. Travis, you know That's, there'll be something else in a few months. I only remember her names after they've become unimportant. It's part of it's part of our thing, Christina, my thing. Well, in <laughs> skinny blonde white lady news, she is fighting with another skin bl- skinny blonde white lady. And Sarah, tell us what these pretty people are fighting about. This is truly an honor. Um, <laughs> so in case you missed it, there were some photos that came out of... Tarek and Heather, who are married, that would be the Selling Sunset star and Tarek El Musso, and Christina Now Hall and her husband Joshua Hall at one of their kids' soccer games. So both couples were there at the kids' soccer game, and there's some photos of Tarek pulling Heather, his wife, away from Christina, his ex wife. There are also some photos where it looks like the kids' coach is getting involved as Tarek and Josh look visibly upset with each other. And this all came the day after the Selling Sunset reunion, and we don't 100% know what was happening between these iconic twosomes. Um, but things looked <laughs> That's heated. That's really generous clearly, use iconic, of iconic. Iconic in my life. <laughs> okay. Iconic blondes that look totally identical. Um, Absolutely. But it did come the day after the Selling Sunset reunion in which the fight that Tarek and Christina had last summer on set of Flip or Flop in which Tarek called Christina a uglier, less rich version of Heather, Heather and yeah. said she was a washed up loser that everybody knew that she was washed up loser. Um, and Tan France brought that up at the reunion and said, is that true? And Heather was just like, I mean, back me up girls, like play and all that was a really good Heather. Um, <laughs> that was a very good Heather <laughs> really playing, playing up to it, not saying like, no, it was very like cheeky about it. And I think I would imagine Christina maybe didn't love that. Um, we had source reporting saying that Christina and Heather just really don't like each other. Um, and I think they got along in the beginning, but in the last year or so hasn't not so much. Christina Christina kind of thinks Heather steps on her toes. Heather thinks she's like a perfect stepmom and does a lot. So Christina should respect her. Um, and Tarek and Josh don't have like a major relationship because he just showed up not that long ago. Yeah. So, I mean, the pictures are truly worth a thousand words. Um, Christina's rep has addressed this and said a personal matter was discussed and a sense been resolved. We are all focused on co-parenting as a team and moving forward. Well, we are not, Christina. I will never focus on the soccer fight. <laughs> Yes. Well, I, my, my mind lives rent free on that soccer field and I'm not going anywhere for a minute. It's the most interesting sports news I've had in a decade is these two, uh, a step mom and a mother uh, grabbing arms and fighting with the coach on this soccer field. And Sarah, as, uh, as someone who's been thinking about this more than your average person on the street, what do you think happened? Tell us about this fight from your 
view and knowledge of everything because we've spoken to a lot of sources about this fight now yeah i mean i definitely i think the selling sunset reunion played a part in it i think that christina did not like that heather kind of like played into the question of are you because she didn't want to be a poor ugly version of heather yeah and i think i mean heather also does a lot of interviews she's asked about the kids and she says nice things she's always just talking about like co-parenting whatever and oh also i mean as we know christina hack el musso and steph Hall is in the middle of a very nasty custody battle with her second husband aunt over her two-year-old son Hudson and Christian um Heather and Tarek did an interview and they were just like you know we focus on our house and our house there are like aren't as many yeah. we like we have our guidelines and I think some people kind of implied that maybe that meant Christina didn't have guidelines so I think there's probably a few things that she was reading that she I bet Christina you know maybe maybe put out her foot when Heather walked by or something and Heather <laughs> tried to fire back. She's used to fighting. She's on selling sunset. I don't think on flip or flop, they really go head to head. So I bet Heather, she's had maybe Heather, you know, she fought back. It's the, the stars we didn't know we needed to really distract us. These two ladies just fighting with each other. We know it's not going to be the last time. So. I need that them all in a reality show so badly. Even I when do the kids too. are old enough. It sounds like they would be down for something like that since it is their job. Yeah. Well, speaking of two blonde A-listers, let's talk about two other blonde A-listers. I'm kidding again. Joe Alwyn and Taylor Swift, who I'm not. In fact, we got some actual quotes from Joe about Taylor, which I would say we probably get three words a year, I think, from Joe about Taylor, if I had to break it down. Again, I'm not a scientist, but I did work up an equation for this, and it is it is about that, two words a year. Uh, well, Joe Alwyn isn't worried about Taylor Swift uh, watching him get hot and heavy on the TV. Um, He talked uh, to Extra while promoting his new Hulu series, Conversations with Friends, and sort of had a conversation with a friend. He says, I mean, she's read the book and she loves the book, so she knows it. Taylor just couldn't be a bigger fan of the project. That's already more than he said about her in their entire relationship. Now, Joe Alwyn plays a married man named Nick who has an affair with Francis, spoiler alert, a 21-year-old college student. Um, And he says, quote, you go through like a lot of rehearsal and kind of in-depth conversations about the intimate scenes and what kind of story we're going to tell. Um, And it says, Taylor has no problem with it. But again, I was just sort of shocked that Joe Alwyn even spoke about Taylor Swift. I, we never hear that. Uh, what do you think the cause of this was? He never talks about her at all. Do you think this was just sort of like a lapse or they're going to be talking about each other more? I, I, I can't stop thinking about why. I think that it was totally um, manipulated because he is going to come out in a mini series or TV show. I don't know how. I I read the book Conversations with Friends, so I'm really excited for the show. But um, you know, I think that they have to say something because people are going to be wondering. Obviously, I'm sure he has a lot of on-screen chemistry with whoever yeah. he is. And I think Taylor was like, you better put something out there so that everybody knows that we are a okay. Now, as far as Taylor goes. I think that this has been like a really great mature relationship for her because she has sort of kept it under wraps and to herself. But, you know, historically with Taylor, we know that she only starts talking when stuff goes south. Yeah. So, you know, Joe, you better keep doing what she asks you to do. (laughs) Otherwise, don't ever lend her a scarf. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. I also I watched this video and I it was the first time I'd ever heard Joe Alwyn speak. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, way more talks. British sounding than you think. Yeah. And like, I was just like, oh, I like he's just kind of been this blonde Ken like doll that I, has been dating Taylor Swift for all this time. And, you know, thank you, because you you co-wrote some of my favorite songs on um, Evermore and, and Folklore. Um, but I have heard I haven't seen conversations with friends. Some of my coworkers have seen the screeners. Apparently it's pretty steamy. Um, so I think that that it, it makes sense, you know, it's a good way for also, I think it was access, um, the journalist to ask about Taylor. Cause it's like, how does your significant other feel about the That's scenes? Brilliant. Right. I mean, it's, it's a good way to get it in there. Cause I'm sure any other time he's asked about her, it's the same quote that he's been giving for, for years. And it's so boring yeah. and it's, it really annoys me. Like I get it. You want to be private, but like, come up with something. I don't know. It's just, I think it's kind of lame. So I think their relationship is kind of lame to be quite honest, even though I'm happy for her, I guess. She likes it like that. 
does she though like better well no but lame lasts for her lame but i don't lasts. that's it's not like what i need, need. You know, I need a little yeah. upset. Yeah, yeah. You I know, need it's her all for you, baby gal. Yeah, I'm she just wants saying. a dash of Christina Hack in there. I can only speak for me. Like, who am I to speak for these two? I can only speak for me. Um, but yeah, no, they seem really happy. I'm interested by the show, and I'm I'm really interested to see if Joe Alwyn's like star will rise because he. I know he's an actor, but like to yeah. me, he's just been Taylor's boyfriend for all this yeah. time. So, and I know he's I think done more stuff like in England. So if he gets yeah. like major success from the show, the same way, like the normal people stars did, and this is the same author, I would be interested to see how that affects their dynamic. Cause like, if he gets more famous, well, will that mess with them or will they make him a power couple? Yeah. Or was he cast into this project because <laughs> the producers and casting agents knew that it would put some heat on the cast um, because of the connection to Taylor but you know I just want to hear more about Sarah Heron our baby girl just wanting more schadenfreude and full frontal I like it I like this episode a lot it's telling me so I hope my dad skips this one <laughs> yeah, dong, just, dong, dong, dong. <laughs> there is a lot of dongs in this um yeah and I I also thought of him as a model who I never heard speak at all. And I was thinking about this while watching this video. And I realized that I I watched them like meet for the first time because it was that Met Gala after party when she got with Tom Hiddleston yeah. that she first met Joe Alwyn. And of course, I had my eyes on Taylor Swift the whole time because she was the chair. She was a huge star at that time. And I remember her, like, I can see her being introduced to him and he was really? so young at the time. And it was just, it's just such a wild moment. But I do believe that they were in love because there was even like a spark at that time and then her You're and Tom part of Hiddleston, their origin story Trav <laughs> I'm, I was an onlooker but then her and Tom Hiddleston were so creepy together and yeah. he was like doing all this foot stuff to her like in front of everybody it was very strange so I'm glad she got <laughs> with yeah he was like lacing up her heels that went up to her thigh and then he was massaging her feet and then switched over her shoes it was very foot fetishy and it was just in the middle of everybody allegedly <laughs> oh, it was not alleged. I saw it happen. It was very, very real. Um, and it was just very, I'm glad she went with Joe Alwyn. And Tom Hiddleston just sort of seemed like her uncle who shouldn't be playing with her shoes that way. Well, let us move on. This is a great segue, actually, because uh, we can't have anything nice. Uh, Fred Savage, new mm. sexual assault allegations. Um, and, harassment, I think, not assault. Oh, sorry. Harassment allegations. No assault. It's definitely, definitely very, very different. <laughs> Thank uh, much. Uh, they're both terrible. Sarah, yeah. tell us um, <laughs> what happened. And so we no longer have to wonder years. Oh, that was nice. Um, yeah, to put it in, you know, the 20th century television's words instead of ours so we don't get sued. Recently, we were made aware of allegations of inappropriate conduct by Fred Savage. And as policy, an investigation was launched. Upon its completion, the decision was made to terminate his employment as executive producer and director on The Wonder Years. So in case you're wondering, you know, what year is it? The Wonder Years. Um, this is The Wonder Years reboot that Fred Savage has been a part of since Lee Daniels' company owned the rights and it is an all black cast um set uh i don't i think it might be in the same time as the original one years i'm not really yeah, sure um but is. fred savage is a producer he directs a bunch of episodes um and this of uh, he was fired he is not yet to comment on anything and it's also just funny because it not funny but it brings back like uh, old stuff from Fred Savage's past because back in the original mm -hmm. Wonder Years days during the final season um, when he was 16 years old, him and the actor who played his brother were Jason Harvey yeah. or something like that. Sorry, I've never seen the Wonder Years. Um, were oh, it's adorable. Were accused of, har of harassing <laughs> a wardrobe person and there was a lawsuit, a major lawsuit that was settled out of court and some say it kind of played into why the show ended when it did. Um, it was very quiet, hush hush. And then it's been brought up again because of this. And then obviously in 2018, there was allegations against Fred Savage that he, yeah. again, another wardrobe person, so it was always like behind the scenes people, um, acted inappropriately with another um, wardrobe person. And um, there was an investigation in that the show, The Grinder, which aired in 2015, but it came out in 2018 as part of Me Too. There was an investigation. The allegations were denied by Fred and the investigation came up with nothing and it life went on so in theory this is the third time fred savage i mean not in theory as fact third time he's been accused of acting inappropriately on set since he was 16 till now at how old he however old he is now 50 something and 
I just think like the audacity to do this for a third time, allegedly, when you got away with it all this time and you you made it through Me Too movement with like somehow getting vindicated of like the yeah. company saying that there was nothing wrong and your lengthy statement about how you, you support people in your career. <laughs> um, like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> I always go back to that the majority of actors and artists and people in the public eye are narcissists. Um, it's just very possible that he's just not even thinking like, wow, I got caught twice before. He's not thinking about anything that the outside world is giving him. It's just about what he believes he deserves he should be giving to the outside world. So it just makes me upset because, you know, Back in the original Wonder Years, old Winnie, her name was Gwendolyn. And so I always felt a real special <laughs> connection to the Wonder Years. Um, but this is just, oh. it's just a bummer. Like, it's like, has nobody learned anything from the Me Too movement? Like, come on, guys. Stop it. And like Sarah said, he got away with it twice before. And mm-hmm. I remembered when this was brought up again, but I had forgotten about these allegations. I would have just watched the Wonder Years, you know, if he hadn't yeah. tried to sexually harass somebody again. I bet <laughs> it's a wardrobe person because that yeah. seems to be the trend. Um, but just savage and not in the good way. Well, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about Nick and Priyanka, the my favorite Jonas and the Indian Beyonce, Priyanka Chopra. Now they, of course, tied the knot in 2018. The train of her dress is something to behold. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's like a mile long. And then they shocked the world in January 2022 when they realized they secretly welcomed their first child together, a baby girl, via surrogate. On May 8th, they unveiled their first official photo of their baby girl. Um, her her face was covered, uh, censored with a white heart emoji. And the caption said, on this Mother's Day, we can't help but reflect on these last few months and the roller coaster we've been on, which we now know so many people have experienced. They went on to say, after 100 plus days in the NICU, our little girl is finally home. Every family's journey is unique and requires a certain level of faith. While ours was a challenging few months, what becomes abundantly clear in retrospect is how precious and perfect every moment is. They added that they were overjoyed to bring Malti home, thinking, uh, thanking the medical teams at the Children's Hospital in La Jolla for their love and support, and finished out by saying, our next chapter begins now, and our baby is truly a badass. Let's get it, MM. Mommy and Daddy love you. Now, I think that this is this is a reason why we have celebrities, right? I, you know, there's baby was in the NICU for 100 days. And the reason why we have celebrities is so we don't feel alone, like when it happens to us, feel like we can say, oh, this happened to Nick and Priyanka. And I think it's really good that they, you know, talked about this and that they're bringing their healthy baby girl home and bringing some awareness to parents who, you know, have to stay with their recently born babies in the hospital for so, so long. So I'm very proud of them for for, you know, coming clean about all of this. I agree. And I think that it does help give people hope. Um, even just the fact that they have this baby by a surrogate. I think that so many people struggle with infertility issues mm-hmm. and a couple like Nick and Priyanka who are, seem so real, you know, it just really gives people hope and solace. Um, I, and I feel for them, you know, I really feel for them and, um, I'm glad that their baby is doing well and on the mend. I love that we say like Nick and Priyanka seem so real because when they started out, we were all like, ha ha ha, these two, <laughs> this is fake. And then they got married like within six months and it was like, what's going on? And now I totally agree. They, I mean, this is, I think it's also so interesting because they, you know, they had their daughter through a surrogate and then obviously the surrogate, you know, went into labor really early. So I wonder yeah. how that dynamic is. It's not the, sur- I'm not saying the surrogate's fault, obviously, but um, that must be Good. really interesting. No, I know, but like, I mean, it's just in another layer. It's yeah, another layer. Um, it is. In our family, we recently just celebrated my cousin's daughter coming, her one year of her um, coming home day from the NICU. Yeah. She's in the NICU for months. So yeah very exciting for Nick and Priyanka and yeah I agree makes them relatable I'm happy they shared and I want to know more I want to see this baby's face we got the emoji that always drives me nuts um, I know you can tell we're not going to see them. this baby's face for many years They're when they scary. start off like that those two have always been very private they've yeah. really tried to be except for like the four weddings 
Exactly. But, you know, it's like I'm dying to go. But to she's Indian. I don't, exactly. No, I, don't, I don't fault her for that. I just kind of wonder also because, you know, family dynamics and sisters in law and mm. Sophie Turner, who is married to Nick's brother, Joe Jonas, is pregnant with their the duo's second baby. She's very, very pregnant. Um, she was on the Met Gala red carpet, like super heavily pregnant and quite honestly, in my opinion, looked better than, you know, 90% of the women there. I wonder if like Sophie Turner and Priyanka Chopra share recipes. Like, I wonder like mm-hmm. if they have a side chain to do mother-in-law, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I find super interesting. And, you know, it is really this baby is, you know, Nick, Nick and Priyanka's baby is kind of right in between mm-hmm. Joe and Sophie's baby. So like these cousins, it's just going to be really cute um, as they all grow up together. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into like the realness of it. And I hope there is some realness to it, you know. It is adorable. And again, I'm glad they brought like attention to this because I've known a lot of babies who've been in the NICU for months, a year, and it's just good to know that people are not alone and this is more common than people think it is. And also in happy baby news, Michelle Williams of The Greatest Showman, Not Destiny's Child, is pregnant with her third baby. Yay! Sarah, what do we need to know about this new little bundle of baby joy brewing in this belly? Okay, Michelle Williams, yes, of Greatest Showman fame, of Dawson's Creek fame, you know, she's got a lot. Busy Phillips' best friend. Busy Phillips' BFF. Yeah. Um, She is on the cover of Variety this week, and she is pregnant, and she also revealed that her first child- I have it right here. Oh my God, hey girl. (laughs) Her first child with husband Thomas- Kale, who was her director um, yeah. in that Fauci Vernon movie, um, they revealed the name. Oh, no, limited first... series. Oh, sorry, limited series. Um, the, <laughs> their their oldest son is named Hart, which was we didn't know yet, so that was exciting reveal. And yeah, she's pregnant with baby number three. So obviously, if you know Michelle Williams at all, you know that she has her oldest daughter, who is now sixteen. Matilda. I can't with... Matilda it. is sixteen. She is sixteen with the I late need to see Keith Ledger. With her, like you know when um like when... sorry. I mean, I just, I'm dying like Salma Hayek just posed with her daughter, Valentina, on the cover of British Vogue. And I mean, like, hello, uh, Valentina, who I last saw when she was seven. I was like, you're a teenager. Yeah, crazy. So yeah. I'm dying to see Matilda. Matilda, pose on something. Come on out, girl. Matilda, write a book. Um, <laughs> Michelle very Williams. Matilda of you. Yes, Michelle Williams said it was a good reminder that life goes on. The world we brought a baby into is not the world we thought we were bringing a baby into. Talking about um, giving birth during coronavirus, um, but the baby yeah. is ignorant of that. He loves his a joy of discovery and happiness of a loving home. It's totally joyous. As the years go on, you sort of wonder what they might hold for you or not hold for you. It's exciting to discover that something you might want again and again is available one more time. The good fortune is not lost on me and my family. Mm-hmm. Um, what That's was sweet. really interesting in this cover story was also her talking about Jeremy Strong of succession fame, moving in with her not long after Heath died and like becoming a father filter for Matilda. She said he does. she didn't grow up with a father, but she grew up with her Jeremy. I had no yeah. idea that Kendall Roy was a, a father figure to Mel- Matilda Del- Ledger. I had no idea either, but that quote where she said, like, he he played like her life depended on it, and it did. And that was just so, yeah. I kind of have not really um, been a fan of Jeremy, of Jeremy Strong, like, since it's a bad that rep. article where it's like, he just seemed like a, basically, yeah. but now you see that really he has a ton of heart and, um, yeah, it, I, I will totally see him in a different light now because of Michelle Williams. That was adorable. I sort of like the name Heart for her child. It's right. like in terms of celebrity baby names that Except are crazy. Megan, one of Megan King Edmonds, whatever babies is named Heart. So that ruins it a little bit for me. <sighs> well, I was having a good day, Sarah. Until now. <laughs> um, well, speaking of people who are having a good day, and then it stopped Black China. She took oh. another L in court this week uh, in her legal battle against the Kardashians. Give it she, up, China. Give it up, no, Black China. No, no. Save your money. You need oh, it. She, save your money. This lawyer, you. I already know you're paying too much because she tried to have her and her lawyer say that there was an extreme bias against her by the judge in the case, and that is why the Kardashians won. But then 
uh, Judge Gregory Alcorn fired back and said, actually, Black China, there are no legal grounds for disqualification um, from this course and me being biased because it is a motion that you have to bring up during the trial, have the judge recruit, recused and then replaced. Um, it's a baseless effort, he said. Uh, other Kardashian's attorney said it was a baseless effort to save face after losing the trial and to try to make a scapegoat out of the judge. Now, Black China will not give up, as we're telling her, because she is appealing this case and going to go back. She has her case with Rob coming up, which I actually think she could win. Um, but it's just, it's sad. It's a money grab. It's a fame grab. This case made no sense because we are all lawyers. Look at Sarah's sweatshirt. Um, she also has a legal team and says, Kim <laughs> is my cat. lawyer. Yeah, and it's just, it's sad at this point. Yeah, I mean, listen, the revenge porn case, totally. Um, Give I her think some she money. She deserves with. it. It's still a little confusing because this is like five years later and your daughter is getting old enough where she's going to like read the internet. And I just feel as though it's, you know, you're not, you're, it's just not worth it, China. Um, but yeah. the Kardashians, I mean, as always, the gift that keeps on giving, I don't know if you guys saw the most recent episode of Keeping Up the Kardashians that dropped just a couple hours ago, but um, I luckily did get to see it early. So I cheated. Is that um, what it's called on Hulu? No. It's called The Kardashians. The Kardashians, not yes. the Kardashians. No, just the Kardashians. Yeah. Actually, there's a scene in one of the upcoming episodes where they are, Scott's like, what are we calling this show? And Chris is like, I think the Kardashians. So, Gwen, you're very on point there. Um, and it was a good episode, a lot of Kravis and Scott stuff. But um, more importantly, there was two little nuggets that I know we needed to address. Um, real quick, Con um, Kim was talking about, give us a little updates about Connie in every episode, which is really interesting because you kind of go back in real yeah. time and get like the day of because she says, oh, you know, it's the day after the Wall Street Journal Awards. And he called me and told me my career was over because my outfit was so ugly and I looked like Marge Simpson. <laughs> um, so that was epic. And Kim, it's really kind of I love seeing Kim talk about how Connie really did like define her style and she doesn't like know who she is anymore and it just felt really relatable and like it was just wild to see her like stress about what to wear and like I'm just really happy for her that she's like away from him but um also Kendall um doesn't know how to what do you say cut a cucumber a cucumber how you say <laughs> quote so Hilary Baldwin this video is insane you guys she's literally holding the cucumber and like the knife like it is i mean i thought i couldn't cook kendall jenner cannot cut a cucumber she like swaps the placement of her hands so she has like the wrong hand cutting it and then the best moment is well she asks if it has seeds and she might de-seed this cucumber and then yeah. she uses her finger to like hold it in as she cuts it luckily chris jenner comes to her aid and was like let's get the chef in here she's like chef chef cucumber. can you cut this cucumber <laughs> Chef. It's, oh, the best piece of content it's honestly the such a good show us. like i really there because because there's like the major storylines like the crab and like seeing like courtney and travis make out in front of scott not realizing like that scott could see them yeah. epic um but then like it's a little nuggets that are in there it's just like there's some tristan stuff coming up where it's like in what world does this guy think that he could get away with what he was doing with the way he's talking what he knew like there's so many little nuggets and it's just i really am liking it I cried over something irony. that happens in Kim's law, law career. I was sobbing in my bed. Like, I don't know if it was a hangover or what, but I was crying. <laughs> wow. Emotional and vulnerable. Oh, hungover and vulnerable, you know? Mm. Hungover and vulnerable. I get it. Well, seriously, if you take some time out of your day today to watch Kendall Jenner cut a cucumber. This is not you sponsored by the Kardashians, yourself. but it should be. <laughs> it is sponsored by cucumbers, actually. Thank you. Well, do you guys know what it's time for? That's right. Cucumber celebrity birthday boxing mania. Well, we have four celebrities who are about to take the ring. Sarah Huron, the first bout is to you. We got two dudes up here in the boxing room. We have Jason Biggs, Mr. American oh. Pie, who is 44 this week, versus Mr. Robot himself, Rami Malek, who is 41 this week. Okay, well, you know, I'm really not overly familiar with Rami Malek. I've never seen iRobot. I've never seen the Bohemian Ras Ras Rhapsody Queen movie, although my mother loves it. Oh, it's so it. good. Um, whereas Jason Biggs, I do like Jenny Mullen. Mullen. I like the Jenny Mullen joke because people were mom shaming her. And she was like, listen, I'm going to have to tell my kids they're in private school because my husband effed a pie. So <laughs> this, what you're worried about is not 
a problem. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, so funny. I'll give it to Jason Biggs and his pie. Oh, that is, that is his see, let's, let's, let's end where how I started this episode, shall we? <laughs> yeah, with celebrity penises. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, well, uh, saved the best for last, Gwen Flamberg, because we have Vanessa Williams, uh, who the original Colors of the Wind singer, uh, My Pocahontas Forever. Vanessa Williams is 59 this week versus the international supermodel of the world, the face that did it all, Linda Evangelista, 57 um, years old. I mean, these two, it's going to be a face-off. Yes, it um, is, a literal. You know, I, I really do believe that Apples to apples, Vanessa Williams would beat Linda Evangelista down. But since Linda Evangelista was named by Cool Sculpting, yes. she's got a lot of aggression that she needs to get out. And I think also we should just give it to her. So I, Linda Evangelista takes up. And, you know, we gave her her $10,000 a day, so she did get out of bed. Famous <laughs> quote, of course. She doesn't get out of bed for less than $10,000. All right, Sarah, here on Linda Evangelista, the face, 57 years old, versus the man who put his penis in a pie. Jason Biggs, 44, who is taking home this crown? Um, Belt. I mean... I guess to end on a less crude note, we can give it to Vanessa Williams. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're not Vanessa bookending Williams this with celebrity. Out. Oh, yeah. Linda, Linda Evangelista. Evangelista. <laughs> oh, I don't even know who that is. Linda, Linda Evangelista? Evangelista? <laughs> yeah, who's that? Oh, she's Sarah like the world's Heron. famous supermodel. Ever. Okay, well, Jason Biggs, it's your big day, buddy, old pal. Van Camp Award <laughs> for you. Great. Well, congratulations to Jason Biggs. And I really do love his wife. She's so funny. Follow her on Instagram. Well, thank you to my host, uh, celebrity penis expert Sarah Huron and Gwen Flamberg for helping me spill all of this piping hot celebrity this week. Again, this is Travis Cronin of Speakly's Hot Hollywood Podcast with your weekly peek into the glamour, glitter, fashion, and fame. I'll just keep it there. No other things peek into it, Sarah. For all of your favorite celebrities, because after all, they're just, just like us. Like us. us. Oh, Gwen, Thank you guys. We'll be back me. next week. Really fast, like usual, and I slow down for you. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week. Bye.